Okay, this video is called Instant IQ Test for Art, History, and Culture. And this is kind of what it comes down to. You know, nobody wants things to be the way they are, but they are the way they are. And it's sort of like, you know, the Democrat Party is the American Communist Party, and they want communism. They want to bring back slavery. You know, the only hope is that there'll be some type of religious revival, and right now it doesn't look good. It looks like the world's just pushing farther and farther into this descent into slavery. Okay. Now here is sort of, you know, the old, you know, Christian France, beautiful cathedral, Notre Dame Cathedral. It's magnificent. People all over the world want to visit it. Victor Hugo wrote a novel about it. And then here's, uh, you know, here's Notre Dame as it's becoming communist. They're just burning down all the churches. In uh, Stalin's Russia in the 1900s, they burned down 48,000 churches, okay? And more and more of that, that's what's coming unless there's an appreciation for tradition and religious culture. Because, you know, you can't have it both ways. You either have a religious culture and a religious ethics or you don't. And once you don't, everything goes downhill. So here's a famous picture. This is 18, 1962 when Marilyn Monroe sang... Uh, Happy birthday, Mr. President, to JFK. And that was sort of like a high point in America, sort of like trying to become Christian. And don't get me wrong, you know, nothing to be proud of here with JFK fooling around with Marilyn Monroe when he was married. All of that is wrong, of course. But JFK was trying to make America better, all right? And when JFK got bumped off, America sort of rapidly been going downhill since that time and descending into communism. There were some attempts to sort of save America, you know. Reagan, you know, he, Ronald Reagan, he did some good things. Um, is it, we'll, we'll talk about that some other time. But America's really pretty much really gone downhill in these last 40 years. You know, here's the Statue of Liberty, the idea of freedom, beautiful painting of it here. Um, and this is what America used to be like. This is what it was like when I grew up, okay? Uh, my mom didn't have to work at all. She was like the happiest person in the world, you know. Plenty of time for the kids. Kids are all happy, well taken care of, you know. Um... Every kid in my high school was given a car, and I didn't live in that rich a neighborhood uh, when they, you know, were 16. Um, it was not that big a deal. The kids, almost everybody I knew went to college, um, and it was all on dad's income. The moms didn't work. Things were good, okay? I had a great childhood. I loved it. And lots of kids and my friends are all happy. This is where things are going. The Statue of Liberty is sinking <laughs> under the water into the quicksand, uh, and men who try to do good things are getting hassled, they're getting screwed over for 10 different reasons. And a lot of these modern pseudo-values are a psyop being used to punish good men, okay, and other good people doing good things. And where this is all going is pushing towards no right to property, no right to free speech, no right to good food, okay? It's all going in the same direction, and people need to speak up and try to reverse it and do the right thing when they're given the chance to to have some influence. Okay, so here's a famous painting of Behold the Man, H. Homo, um, by Antonio Cesare. And basically, the crowd had a chance to choose. Do they choose to save Jesu Christu, or do they choose to save Barabbas? And of course, the crowd chose to save free Barabbas and not save Jesu Christu. Okay, hey, crucify Jesu Christu. Okay, and so people in the modern world, you have a choice. You know, every election, you have a choice. You know, and people, you know, modern Christians are so stupid, they don't even just change, choose a leader who doesn't like them. They choose a leader who hates them and wants to bump them off, depopulate them, okay? Come on. Now, everybody has a chance. You know, they say, take up your cross. So here is Simon the Cyrenian when he's asked to help carry the cross for Jesus Christ who had fallen, okay? And everybody in their own life has a choice between good and evil. You know, it runs down... Every man's heart, as Fyodor Dostoevsky had said and Alexander Solzhenitsyn had said. And so, do the right thing. Choose the good. Stand up for the good. Because we're all pressured to do the wrong thing and keep our mouths shut. So, okay, here's when Pilate washes his hands. And by this, I think it symbolizes that the elites don't care about the regular people. You've seen it. All the regulatory agencies for protecting the food supply, they're all bogus. They're all paid off. And it's like that in so many other institutions. As a matter of fact, I would call the modern era the rise of the puppets. Okay, And so often, all every type of lame lefty psyop excuse is used to put a puppet in place who just does as they're told, you know. Got very little leadership in modern society. And this is coming from the, patents, the, the paintings of Thomas Cole. You know, originally, you know, in a new country, the West was sort of a primitive place, you know, homesteading. 
you know, Papa's going out trying to bring home some food for the family, Mama's taking care of the kids, and that combination of cooperation works pretty well. And then the civilization, this happened in ancient Greece, it happened in many other civilizations in Rome and in the West. You know, they reach where they've got their act together pretty well and people are quite prosperous and they still have maintained their traditions, their history, their religion. But as they start losing that, society falls, okay? Now one thing I talk to about feminism, okay? The reason why feminism can exist is because society was made safe, all right? And there were rules that everybody had to follow. So a woman could walk down the street by herself and be fine and just my, and have her own business. Okay, these are beautiful paintings from France in the 1800s, which was really a golden age of art. If you study art, you'd be amazed at how magnificent the art was from the 1800s in England and France and other places. So I show this because, you know, this idea of feminism that women don't need men, men and women don't need to help each other and cooperate, in my opinion, that is not realistic. Women and men need each other and they should be helping each other. And as you open up the border and you have, they've emptied out the prisons in middle America and South America and they've overcrowded the cities and they've destroyed a lot of cities. You know, like London, it's not safe to walk down the street is what I've heard. And it's kind of becoming that way in a lot of American cities. Like look at San Francisco. So what I'm trying to say is this, this Sayup attitude and anybody who complains about the border they they call them you know the big r word okay look you know my, my mother's from puerto rico off the boat i don't want america border opened up to all these hispanic people you know uh, every country in order for it to survive needs to have a border you can't maintain a country without a border and so when a country you know needs immigrants it should be immigrants who are coming because the country needs a skill like let's say we have a shortage of engineers well then bring in engineers or better yet educate them ourselves with our own academic institutions so this is just being used as a way to sort of beat down and guilt trip anybody who speaks up about it but it's ridiculous that our border is open and it's been open for so long and that's destroying the country and it's one way the deems get more voters in an unfair way um, so anyways, people should be aware of this because the freedoms we took for granted, we're losing them. Okay, and we don't see this type of beautiful art. This is what's happening when you have an open border. Cities are being destroyed. This is the vandals sacking Rome. Okay, and we're seeing something like that in our cities. Like look at San Francisco, look at some of our other cities. Okay, that's not good for anyone. And here's a great painting about the course of empire, destruction by Thomas Cole from the Hudson River School. This is in 1836. So basically, Thomas Cole is following the theory of history, this, the cyclical theory of history by Vico Giambattista, whereby uh, initially life is rough, sort of the pioneering age, and then the men create a society, and the men and women are helping each other, and they've got their religion, they're devout in their religious practices, and they gradually become more and more prosperous, and then they start becoming immoral, and they start becoming kind of lazy, and then they lose their religion. The philosophers mock the religion, and the country loses its religion. Their morals go to, down the tubes, and then all of a sudden they become weak and stupid, and they're quite often conquered by uh, another uh, group. Okay, here's the famous painting, uh, Fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah, this one by John Martin in 1852. And Lot's wife turned around and she turned into a pillar of salt. And here's a magnificent painting by Howard David Johnson. This is just beautiful. Look at the facial expressions on her. She looks back, turns to salt. You know, Lot and the two daughters keep going forward. So it's, it's a magnificent painting. And what I'm saying is, let's not look back to the stupidity and mistakes that America's made in recent times. And uh, America could still turn itself around. It's not, America could still be a great country. It was a great country, you know, when I was young, 40 years ago, but it's going down the tubes pretty rapidly, but it's not too late, I hope. Okay, and we're very much heading into something like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, okay? You know, is there going to be, so here they are, the four horsemen. The white horse was for conquest, pestilence, and plague. We're potentially heading into World War III. Look at this crazy nonsense in Ukraine. It was just basically a planned strategy to get rid of all the Ukrainian Christians and steal their land, all right? That's what it's about. Look at Hawaii. You know, they stole all the land from those Hawaiian people. Talk about a screw job land grab. And it was so easy for, you know, that to be done. The elites, they're going to keep doing that to other places. You know, I talk to old people from, 
you know, Europe during World War II, and they said when times got bad, you would just go into the forest and live off the forest. But they're burning down all the forest. You're not going to be able to go into the forest, okay? Do you understand that? You think that's an accident? All these fires all over the world, especially in Western countries. Why is it that only the Western countries have their border opened up? Because the Western countries are being targeted for destruction because they push too much for freedom, okay? Korea doesn't have a problem with immigration. Japan doesn't have a problem with immigration, okay? It's the Western countries, and they're going to get rid of the, the white Christian men first because they think the elites and the communis, communists, they think that the white Christian men are too much trouble. They, they push too much for freedom, so they want to get rid of them first. They figure everyone else will be easy to control. That's how communists think, okay? I don't make the rules. I just read history, and that's what history says. Okay, it's a very specific thing. And by the way, this is all in writing on the internet. You know, it's not my opinion. I didn't figure this out on my own. I just read it all. It's all quite widely available on the internet. Okay, and America sort of descending into these circles of hell. We're headed towards starvation. We're headed towards World War III. You know, we've had all these problems with the crops, with the food manufacturing plants. America's going down the tubes, okay? All our food supply is, is, is like contaminated. Our air is contaminated. Our, we got electro pollution, we got air pollution, we got food pollution, we got water pollution. Okay, this is not a healthy community. We got moral pollution, values pollution. You either have man created in the image of God, therefore part divine, therefore entitled to natural rights, privacy, property, and free speech, or he's just a talking primate, okay? And, you know, the modern institutionalized society of the elites, they want to make man just a talking primate so he can be put in a cage and controlled. You know, they want to stick him into the, you know, the 15-minute C-I-T-Y, okay? And they want him totally to have no freedom anymore, okay? This is what they want. This is an electronic, you know, surveillance, you know, concentration, uh, you know, I hate cell phones, okay? They're like an animal tracker to track you, and they pollute you with electro pollution with your Wi-Fi. This is how the elites envision the future of America, okay? A North American union with us, Canada, and Mexico, and everybody basically being essentially a numbered, tracked, you know, slave, all right? Okay, and then the other thing, you know, they'll try to badmouth Christianity. The reason they hate Christianity is Christianity promotes freedom. Christianity says all men and women are equal in the eyes of God and we all should be nice to each other and all that kind of stuff. What does religion mean? Religari, legari, to ligate, to tie together. It ties the people together. They don't want you tied together. They want you as broken apart as possible. The reason why the divorce laws make it so easy to get divorced is they want to break up all the families. They want to get the children away from their fathers. Um, they want to get the kids as fast as possible in the preschool so they can start brainwashing them and making them stupid. They don't put F- minus in the water to lower IQs for nothing. It's to make you stupid. They don't teach all this nonsense in the public schools for nothing. It's to make you stupid. It's to make you happy to have an open border. It's to make you happy to be a slave. It's the, to make you an atheist, to reject your parents' values. Okay, so this is the ancient Christians meeting in the catacombs, okay? It's a religion of poor people, the desperately poor. And everybody's becoming a lot more poor than they used to be. And here's a, a painting of Nero. And Nero, the Roman emperor of his time, what he did was he burned down a whole bunch of buildings and houses in um, in Rome because because he wanted to use them to build his own stuff. So then he blamed it on the Christians. He scapegoated the Christians, and then what he did he he would burn the Christians as human torches to to create light for his parties. So what I'm saying is. Doesn't that remind you of Hawaii <laughs> burning down uh, people's property so you could steal the land from them? And doesn't it remind you, you know, this painting of blaming stuff on Christians? Look how everything is getting blamed on Christians nowadays. That is not by accident, and especially white male Christians, because the white male Christians are the ones that wrote the Declaration of Independence. They're the ones that wrote the Constitution. Do you think a tyrannical ruler wants you know, the type of people around that are writing constitutions and declarations of independence? No way. Here's basically America right now. This painting is called Lost by August Friedrich Schenk. And he basically says, look, the sheep, the American people, the sheep, they are lost, okay? They got a couple little doggies to protect them. But that doesn't make much difference for long. The wolves are going to pick them off one by one. The shepherd has shown them the cross, the rally to the cross, to get together, to help each other, to speak up for free speech, and so they'll have a potential of having a decent future, to, you know, try to encourage America not to go into all these stupid wars. We don't need to get in everybody else's business. 
America is, um, you know, potentially heading to World War III with China, with Russia. Do we need to be at war with China and Russia? No, we don't. Okay, that's stupid. Okay, that'll be, you know, destruction of America. Okay, look at this. Here's Pope Julius planning the Vatican. And all, the, all this modern American men, they're so feminized by all the estrogenic chemicals. There's estrogen in the water. Women's birth control pills are in the water, EE2. Aluminum, metalloestrogen is used as a so-called clarifier of the water. Soy is subsidized. Why? Because it's like thousands of times more estrogenic than other foods. It's feminizing people. Soy is for chumps, okay? I've, I've gone into great detail on that in the past. And they're also spraying atrazine on the subsidized corn for the high fructose corn syrup. That's like one of the most powerful estrogenic chemicals known to man. It turns the male frog into a female frog. You think that's by accident? People are carrying cell phones in their front pockets, microwaving. Guys are microwaving their balls. Women are microwaving their ovaries, okay? All the poor women, they tell them, oh, here's a pink ribbon for breast cancer. Meanwhile, they don't tell them, don't put a cell phone in your front pocket. Don't use deodorant. Put an aluminum metalloestrogen in your armpit with shared lymphatics with the breast, okay? Or the parabenzoic preservatives going to your breast. So what I'm saying is... <clears throat> You should respect these old-time guys like Pope Julius. He's my favorite pope. Yeah, he had a mistress and he had kids. So what? They should allow the priests to get married. The Catholic Church has been taken over. The current pope stinks. He's an antichrist piece of crap. Okay, and the priesthood, they got too many pedo, you know, you know what's, uh, and because they don't let married men be priests, okay? That's ridiculous. You should allow married men to be priests. That's why the Catholic part, church, organized part of the Catholic Church is going down. The religion itself is good, but the Catholic Church organized component is pretty messed up. So here's Pope Julius. He's got Michelangelo, and he's got Bramante, and he's got Raphael planning you know, to make all the beautiful art in the Vatican and redo the buildings, uh, St. Peter's Basilica and whatnot. Okay, you need good leadership men if you want to have a good society, all right? Here's the, you need good leadership women too, but, also, but let's be realistic also. Women also, you know, th thank God they have children. If you don't have any kids, okay, life gets pretty lonely when you're older, all right? Um, all these women are pushed into feminism, told them not to have child children. You know, wait till a woman gets older. She's going to care a lot more about her children. I never met a woman over 40 who, did, who cared more about her job than her kids, Okay, here's the Pieta, the most magnificent art. And, you know, people criticize Christianity. You know what? It's the best at pretty much everything cultural. It produces the best art, the best painting, the best sculpture, the best literature, the best architecture, the best hospitals, the best universities. Okay, look at these magnificent paintings. They're magnificent, okay? There's nothing even in comparison. And here's a nice quote by Peter Kreef. This is actually from the Twitter page of this lady, Amy E. Balog. She's got great taste, this lady. I recommend if you if you go to Twitter, check out her thing, Amy E. Balog. She has the most beautiful paintings routinely. And, and she mixes them with quotes. Here's a quote from Peter Kreef. He says, The connection between art and Christ is like the connection between sunlight and the sun. Yes, because Christianity provides the metaphysic values that make you value life, see it as rational, and see yourself as a participant in in the struggle to su support good things against bad things in the world, all right? And this is just some, almost like an average church, and it's still magnificent, okay? The Catholic churches are magnificent. They're so much better than the Protestant churches. Protestant churches are bleak in comparison. Uh, the Protestants did produce some great literature, though, especially in the uh, 1800s, and this is uh, from the painting Christmas Carol. This is a painting from the book Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and this is, you know, Cratchit with his son, uh, Tiny Tim, and Tiny Tim lives because Scrooge is redeemed, and he helps them out. It's, it's a great story. I think that's the best novel ever written. That and then Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky in Russia and also Victor Hugo, Les Miserables in uh, France. Those are the three best novels ever written. Okay, now here's a perfect example. This is in New York. Okay, here's St. Peter's, uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. So it's beautiful, okay? And in comparison, here's another uh, building in New York. Typical modern skyscraper. It looks like animal cages. And then what an insult. They put a statue of a turd in one. When you see a statue of a turd, you should not call that art. You should not respect it. You should state that is a disgusting insult. If you don't have any standards, you will get this type of thing, a turd, okay? Tom Wolfe, American writer. Every modern American office building looks like an animal cage and has a statue of a turd in front. That's a disgrace. People should be insulted by that. Okay, and I just showed this before in one of my talks. This is Loretta Lynn's childhood home. It's kind of plain and simple, but that's a family home, okay? And now, here's what I see in Russia. In Russia, you got these bleak, if you're lucky enough to even have a place to live, 
they leave in these bleak shitholes. This is what atheism leads to. You know, this is sort of like terrible, decrepit, lousy looking uh, places. I heard all kinds of stories. I had friends that were, you know, world and Olympic champion wrestlers, and they told me all these stories about how poor and awful Russia was. If you were an Olympic caliber athlete, you'd be lucky enough to get in an apartment. It was just a terrible place. Okay, and then here's the kind of stuff they're doing. You know, the demos. They, um, they call modern art, you know, and the guy puts a urinal on display. Modern art is a disgrace. It's the emperor's new clothes. It's a it's an absolute disgrace. You should not support it. You should not go along with it all. When I see some university professor sit there and try to give up an opinion on modern art, I lose all respect for them. Okay, look at Ayn Rand said the same thing. It's a disgusting lie. Here's a modern art museum in, in Netherlands, and they got, I'm not kidding, this is their statuary, pieces of, of crap, okay? Again, that's this doesn't inspire anything good. It's a total insult. It's a mockery, and you should speak up about it. And also Picasso. Picasso is a big phony. Picasso stinks. Okay, he was a well-known communist. Okay, he was awful. He was a bad person, and he's a bad artist. Okay, don't fall for that trap. Okay, and here's Hazel Christou. Hazel Christou. This is a painting by James Tissot, 1896, Raising the Cross. Okay, he gave you what you need to know to live well. All right. Be nice to each other, follow the Ten Commandments, love thy neighbor, all that stuff teaches you how to live. And, and a lot more than that. People don't even realize how much wisdom there is in Christianity. Okay, yeah, it's true. The average Christian might be a dummy. That's just because the average man is a dummy. Okay, but at least Christianity gives them a place to go and teaches them how to live and be nice and have a decent life. It celebrates the birth of a baby. What does the modern so-called democrats and the liberals, what do they celebrate? They celebrate abortion because they want to depopulate the planet. They want to get rid of families. They want every family divorced and depopulated, okay? They want all the women to be infertile. They want all the men to have low testosterone and be infertile. Okay, so here is Christianity. Celebrates the birth of the baby. Typical painting in Christianity. Adoration of a child, okay? Look how happy everybody is. Children bring joy and happiness, okay? There's a reason for it. We're programmed to be that way. Women are the best. The best person in the world for a baby is, is mama, okay? Next best person in the world for the baby is grandma. Grandma on either mama's side or papa's side, okay? And then papa's like number four, okay? Women are just better with babies than men are. They just are. That's just the way it is. Okay. Um, as kids get older, they need both parents, obviously, in a big way. Okay, now here's just some lovely paintings, all right? I mean, this is just beautiful, and it's just natural. Okay, and women should be allowed to stay home more than three months. They need more time to breastfeed. That's partly why modern kids are so stupid is because their mothers are all rushing back to work and they barely breastfeed the poor brats. And the, and the formula is terrible. It's got aluminum. It's an aluminum can. That's a neurotoxin. It's often made with soy. That's a neurotoxin with uh, hexane in there. That's neurotoxin. Um, with BPA, neurotoxic, mitochondrial toxic. It's all bad, okay? All right, just a few points. We talked about some of this stuff. Uh, in schools, they used to say to Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God. And we should be saying that still. Okay, we used to sing religious songs in public schools. I remember when I was a kid, we used to sing My Country, Tis the Thief, Sweet Land of Liberty. I used to sing those songs when I was in grade school back in the 19... Long time ago, many, many years ago, okay? Nowadays, in public schools, they try to castrate the kids, okay? They try to confuse them and talk them into being castra castrated, chemically castrated or surgically castrated. It's insane, okay? And like I said, we used to celebrate the birth of a baby on Christmas, a national holiday. Nowadays, they celebrate abortion, and they abort the babies, they chop them into pieces, and they make them into medications, and then people eat that. That's cannibalism, okay? They're trying to legalize uh, fooling around, two bag beast with underage children, you know, that's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to legalize. It's insane. It's evil. Okay. Um, kids used to study the ancient Greeks and Romans and learn about free speech, man. You learn about the ancient Greeks, man. That teaches you about free speech in a big way. And you study the Romans, you learn about all the corrupt bad things. And you also understand the parallels between modern America and ancient Rome. Okay. Um, women used to look forward to marriage and having a family. Nowadays, women are so confused they often have 20 uh, partners on their, their count of uh, people they've slept with by the time they're 20 years of age. And the young men think that they're too promiscuous and they're, they're not happy about it. Um, they're brainwashed by this feminism that tells them, oh, having a family doesn't matter. Your career is more important. Yeah, right. You go work for some man's company and then he fires you once you're 40, okay? Then, you know, 
the most important person in the world for a child is the mother, okay? So a woman who has a kid, she's the most important person in the world to that kid. A corporation doesn't care about most of its female employees. Very few of them does it actually care about, okay? Um, a lot of women nowadays, I see them having one or two or more abortions, and then they end up infertile. They keep delaying their baby because of education, career, and for other excuses. Um, and then they end up without any kids, and they often end up quite sad and lonely, okay? Um, what else do I see? I see I see a lot of female doctors that never have any children, and, I, and, and they're pretty too. It's kind of sad. Um, and also, men used to be very macho. When I was growing up, it was, you know, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, and all these other, you know, heroic guys, Charlton Heston, Charles Bronson, Mel Gibson, um... That was all the TV. Father Knows Best was a big TV show. All the TV was like that. Nowadays, it's like, you know, Homer Simpson, a big, fat, stupid guy, and then Family Guy. They're sort of portraying the, the father of the family as, you know, fat, stupid loser, okay? This is all intentional to sort of degrade and feminize the society. And I believe what's happening is it's a giant soup from the Democrats to basically get America to accept slavery, okay? A feminized society cannot maintain freedom, okay? Um, they, and there's no historical free society that was feminized like this. It's, it's just not going to happen, okay? We have, we're supposed to pretend that it can happen. It's not going to happen, okay? You know, women are very smart, but they got little tiny shoulders, and when push comes to shove, women care about their children more than anything else in the world, and they're going to get bullied into accepting anything because they won't be able to defend themselves. They're going to go ask a man, and the man's going to be, you know, working for the KGB, and he's going to tell them this is how it is, all right? That's another reason why communism wants women in all these positions where it feels it can control them. Um, it doesn't want, you know, a white Christian man who's going to say, no, I'm going to do the right thing, okay? No, it doesn't want guys like that, not at all, okay? And people also talk about, oh, isn't affirmative action good helping minorities? Look, I'm a minority, okay? I'm a Hispanic. I'm probably the smartest Hispanic doctor in the whole world. You know what? No one is looking for me. I've written letters to or emails to tons and tons of Hispanic societies. Not a single one is interested in me because what I see now is what I would call the rise of the puppets. They don't want smart men and talented men, they want puppets. They want guys who are easy to control, okay? You would think all these Hispanic academic societies would love to have me come teach their students. No, they have zero interest in that. They want to control them. And all these societies, they're all full of crap. They call themselves Center for Hispanic Excellence, okay? I know the Center for Hispanic Excellence at University of Illinois Medical School. They would not even allow me to talk to the students because I make them look bad, okay? Instead of, you know, giving a big sob story so they can beg for more money, I teach the students how to get good grades. No, they don't want that. They want their sob story and beg for more funding, okay? Men are willing to work, uh, pay is low, can't find a wife. Oh, yeah, lots of these young guys. They don't want to get married or they can't get a woman. And they are ending and they just play videos all, video games all the time, get drunk, and they're going to end up underachieved bachelors. Um, we got more and more of this 24-7 electronic surveillance. You know, like I said, that's where society is going, you know. Uh, when a ruler knows they're bad, they increase surveillance um, because they don't trust the people, all right? And that's kind of, you know, the United States is descending into these electronic uh, concentration, you know what. Um, atheism just destroys families, destroys everything. It's the path to slavery, okay? You can't have a good free society with atheism. It doesn't work. Study history. You'll see these things. Everything I'm saying here, none of this is my opinion. This is just from studying tons of history. So what's happening to the American dream? What brings freedom? The Constitution, free speech, and everything else that's in that Constitution. Capitalism, laissez-faire capitalism, it can't be rigged. It has to have give everybody equal chance and opportunity. Christianity, Christianity unites a population and tells everybody to be nice to each other. And it doesn't have to be everybody be a Christian of religion, but there should be Christian ethics in the society. You should have respect for the Ten Commandments. You should have respect for the Christian holidays. They will bring freedom. Okay, and, and we're allowing all these good institutions to be destroyed. The, the Boy Scouts are a good institution, and boys need to have their fathers around. Boys do so much better when they have their fathers around. When boys don't have the father around, you know, in the picture of raising them, they're much, much, much more likely to end up being criminals. Boys teach them to control their impulses, to control their behavior, to learn how to work hard for a plan into the future, delay gratification, okay, to be polite and nice and respectful, okay, to never lie. That's part of being a good man, all right? Anyways, the Boy Scouts, you know, our society, we allowed them to be destroyed. I was a Boy Scout when I was young. It was very good for me, okay? And, you know, and uh, 
it's good to have role models like GW. There should be a holiday named after GW. How come there isn't a holiday after GW? Because the elites don't want you, the Democrats don't want you to know about what a great man GW was, okay? The Boy Scouts encourages sort of good heroic behavior. That's why they don't want it. That's why they get rid of it, okay? And we should also respect all these old farmer guys. The old family farms kept everybody fed. These giant Big farms nowadays, they get taken over by the big corporations, and the big corporations then just bring in all these herbicides and pesticides and GMO, and they destroy the food supply. Our food supply is heavily contaminated nowadays. Our water is heavily contaminated nowadays, and it's only getting worse. Okay, and then other people say, oh, Christians are stupid. They can't do science. B.S. The real modern scientific method came from the Catholic Church, okay? The greatest scientist who ever lived was Isaac Newton, okay? And, of course, he was a Protestant, but just by birth. All right. Anyways, it, it, it says that, you know, the truth is important. And unless you have this respect for this uh, Christian morality of man is creating the image of God, you are not going to have good science. Modern science is a joke. Look at the entire field of internal medicine is just based on selling drugs that don't work, okay? Don't get me wrong. They do some good things, and a lot of them mean well. They do, they do help the patient on some things. But in general, most modern medicine is a big lie, just selling drugs to chumps, okay? And Christianity already gave you what works. Look at uh, Christ. Here's when he's pierced in the side with the spear by the Roman centurion, okay? And the blood came out, and that then was collected in a cup, and that cup was the Holy Grail, and that's supposed to be able to heal anything. And the reason I kind of go through that is the, the healing stuff that came out of the Bible, it's fantastic. Okay, here's by Christ healing the, the blind man. And you say, oh, well, that's symbolic. What does that have to do with anything? Well, guess what? Walter Kempner had shown. You put the patients on a low-fat vegan diet. He showed photograph after photograph, a reversal of hypertensive retinopathy, diabetic retinopathy. Okay, he saved people's eyesight. Eating what? The Bible diet, Genesis 129 eating plant foods, look at your teeth, they're like a horse, like a herbivore. So this is uh, God's way of healing, and it works, okay? Genesis 129, eat every plant upon the face of the earth, it'll be food for you. I recommend also keep indoor heating and plumbing to live like uh, Adam and Eve. This is a nice painting by Bruegel, Peter Paul Rubin. That works, so say, what did God send us? He said, go outside, get your sunshine, eat your plant foods. The man and the woman should help each other. They should raise their kids together and help each other and stick by each other's side. Okay, that works. That creates happy, healthy people. It's not rocket science, love. And okay, now here's the other point I make. I know lots of real smart Indian doctors, very nice Indian doctors, but I'll tell you something. According to Vishal Mangalwadi, I'm going to show him on the next slide, he said what really enabled India to become free is when they became, more and more of them became Christians. Now, I know a lot of very nice Hindus, and I don't know that much about Hinduism. I don't know that much about it. But the little that I do know, my impression from studying it briefly was that it's kind of godless, okay? Look at this guy, Dinesh D'Souza. He's like a genius. He's made all these movies. He's got all these editorials and books he's written. He does all these good things. And what I believe is that Christianity takes a smart person and it inspires them to use their creativity to do good things. And I think Dinesh D'Souza is a perfect example of that. Because if a person doesn't have a God-based worldview, I have a, they have a tendency, in my opinion, to be more focused on just take care of their family and themselves. They have more of a, a big picture view of mankind. I believe Christianity does that, okay? Here's Vishal Mangalwadi. He wrote a magnificent book called the, Bi the book that made your world all about the Bible. So here's what he is, a guy from India. Here's what he has to say. The Bible is the only force known to history that has freed entire nations from corruption while simultaneously giving them political freedom. And that is why the elites and the communists want to burn down all the Christian churches. They want to burn down the Bible. They want to make the Bible illegal. I knew lots of people that lived under Russian communism, and they would tell me that you weren't allowed to read the Bible. You would get fired from your job if you were a Christian. You'd be fired from your job if you, if you even said you believed in God, okay? Because the ruler wants there not to be a religion because then that makes them God, okay? Here's another quote by Vishal Mangalwadi. It's an awesome book, the book that made your world by this guy, Indian guy, Vishal Mangalwadi. The Bible created the modern world of science and learning because it gave us the creator's vision of what reality is all about. This is what made the modern West a reading and thinking civilization. Okay, there it is. He says, without the Bible, in his opinion, the Indian traditional religion, Maya, he said it, it sort of, it didn't inspire a person, in his opinion, to be as creative as the Bible does, not even close, he said. And it also made them push harder for freedom because it says all men are equal in the eyes of God. Therefore, they should be free. They should not be slaves of the British. 
So he says it inspired freedom big time in India. Okay, then here's Vishal Mangawadi continues. Postmodern people see little point in reading books that do not contribute directly to their career or their pleasure. This is a logical outcome of atheism, which is now realized that the human mind cannot possibly know what is true and right. And I see that a lot. I know lots of doctors, and in my opinion, having a God-based worldview, it makes you go beyond just try to get a good grade on a test so you can get a good job and you can make money. It makes you want to do good things, create something beautiful in art or in behavior in your life, make your life a work of art, okay? That's what my mother did. I seen it, okay? And so it inspires good things. And people say, well, I know a lot of Christians are jerks. Yes, of course, but they'd be a lot worse if they didn't have it is what I would say. Okay, and then here's typical examples. You know, uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Uh, ben Franklin, John Adams helped him, okay? Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin were absolute geniuses. Adams was a smart guy. He wasn't a genius like him, but he was a smart guy. And, uh, you know, thank God we had men like that that got this country started. Okay, all the Western countries are being destroyed. They've opened up the borders to France. They're destroying France. They've opened up the border of the communists to um, Ireland. They're destroying Ireland. They're in the process of trying to destroy Australia and New Zealand. And now they're making progress towards destroying Italy. They're making progress towards destroying Poland. This is not by accident. This is a deliberate attempt to destroy all the Western Christian civilizations because... In the attitude of the communists, the Democrats, they know once these Western Christian civilizations are gone, that's it. Their opinion, you can agree with them or disagree with them, but their opinion, and this is what I've read from reading about them, their opinion is that the other populations are easy to control. They said if the people are not Christian, then they're very easy to control. Okay, so they think that, so what if you got all these smart people from these other countries, they're going to be easy to control. That's the attitude of the Democrats. Okay. I, I've read all this stuff from reading their writings all over the internet. Okay, here is um, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And by the way, they'll try to tell you, oh, well, Thomas Jefferson wasn't that religious. Yeah, right. By modern standards today, he was a religious fanatic. Always reading the Bible, giving copies of the Bible to everybody, owning you know five different versions of the Bible, reading it in five different languages. Okay, and also look who look who founded the world. It's a bunch of white male Christians. Okay, ninety eight percent of them are white male Christians or more. All right, so what I'm trying to tell you is that's just how it was. The women were home with the babies. Back in Victorian England in the 1800s, a woman had an average of 10 kids, okay? She's pretty busy, and she's breastfeeding them, okay? So between breastfeeding one kid and trying to keep track of the other kids, a woman was pretty busy. And here is the, the founders of the United States, they held religious services in the same buildings where they made their laws, signed the Declaration of Independence, and all this other stuff. It was just normal for them to have a church. You know, they could go from making rules and laws for society and writing a Declaration of Independence or Constitution, just sit in the same room, and then have church in the same room. Okay, they were there. There was no separation of church and state. It was the same thing. Okay, and it was Christian society. That is the founding of America. If you study it, you'll see that for yourself, okay? This is all well known. It's kind of, they don't teach it in the schools, but you go into the books that are actually look at source documents from the time. This was all well known. And here's the Constitution, okay? The Constitution created freedom. And again, it was the white Christian men, okay? That's just a fact, all right? And if the reason why they have been targeted for G-E-N-O-C-I-D-E -E is because the elites feel that they are too, they push too hard for freedom, so they want to get rid of them. And according to the elites of the communists, they believe all the other peoples of the world, in comparison, are easy to control. That's why they'll take care of them later. Get rid of these guys first. And that's a big thing of what affirmative action is about. Instead of trying to help minorities so much, like I'm a minority, I'm a Hispanic, nobody's trying to help me. They hate guys like me that are really smart and competent. They don't want me in any type of leadership role or any type of prominent position. They want a puppet, okay? So that's why they're not promoting the best of the Hispanics, for example. They're going to promote somebody who they think is easy to control. Okay, because a, a mediocre person says, I will do whatever I'm told because they know that their their whole job and success is entirely dependent on them being obedient versus a highly competent, intelligent person. Me, like my attitude is, I don't care. Put me any place. I'll do just fine. I'm super, I'm not even competent. I'm super competent. Okay, so anyways, here's a painting of the Constitution. And that's what you need for freedom, the Constitution. And you need uh, laissez-faire capitalism. And you need Christian ethics. Okay, that's what creates freedom. Okay, and then here's the old allegory from the from the uh, Plato, what he wrote uh, the ancient Greeks about Socrates, you know, escaping out of the Plato's cave where everybody was just being 
sort of given a psyop nonsense and sort of tricked into a false sense of reality. And the person who's able to see reality should come back into the cave and try to tell people, even though they get pissed off at them for it. And then they tell them, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. Your genius is looking at the wall of the cave. And people should speak up for free speech because if you don't speak up for free speech, you're not going to have it much longer. It's already fading out. All right, and then here is, Is the American Dream Still Alive? This is a magnificent painting of an eagle. This is Robert Bateman. He's a fantastic artist. He's from Canada. And look at Canada. Canada is, you know, about five or ten years down the road from where USA is headed. And, man, Canada has turned into a crap hole. And so let us hope we don't go there, you know. And nowadays, so many rulers of different countries, you are either got a puppet or you got an evil person, okay? We need more good people in leadership roles. All right, and so basically, here's two paintings. I got one more slide after this. This is The Isle of the Dead by Arnold Brocklin, and this is sort of what America's heading to. You know, everybody is, is becoming infertile or doesn't want children, and you're going to end up in this bleak, miserable place versus Arnold Brocklin also painted The Island of Life. There's families. Everybody's being nice to each other. They're enjoying society. The plants are growing. There's plenty of food for everybody, and hopefully we can live like that. Wouldn't that be a lot better? All right, well, anyways, I hope, uh, I hope people found something in this helpful.